Hey, and welcome to this video. My name is Marie, and today I would like to talk about dislocation. The term has come up before in my video on Laclau and Mouffe's discourse theory, and I tried to explain it there. But in this video, it is about picking up the term again and going a bit more into detail. For me, the concept of dislocation in discourse is particularly fascinating because it is the aspect with which change in discourse can be looked at. If you have any questions or if there's something you would like to know more about, please leave me a comment and I will come back to that in one of the next videos. So first of all, what it is, dislocation? Dislocation is a fundamental feature of discourse. To recall, there are different understandings of what discourse is in post-structuralism. And here I follow the perspective of Laclau and Mouffe, and thus define discourse as everything. Everything is discourse, and that means uh, there is the language and the materialities, and there is no separation between it. Because even the unquestionable phenomena, such as an earthquake, for example, can only be accessed through language. And phenomena never have an inherent meaning, but rather these meanings are articulated in discourse. So let's move on. Dislocation is now a fundamental aspect of discourse, as an underlying feature. But let's have another look at the term. The term describes the state of lack, as well as a not closing of the discourse and a not being able to speak. This is precisely the aspect I have already addressed, namely that terms do not have an inherent meaning, but rather the meanings are articulated through relations of difference and equivalence. The term originally comes from the material sciences, where it refers to a crystallographic defect or the irregularity of a crystal structure. Here, dislocation has an influence on the entire structure of the material. Under the microscope, the structure of the crystal appears homogeneous, but each subcrystal is different from the others, and thus dislocation occurs both at the level of the entire structure and at the level of the individual. When we look at societies, this observation translates as well. As already explained in the video on Laclau and Mouffe's discourse theory, antagonisms play a significant role, even a constitutive role for identities and thus also for collective identities such as societies. In this context, societies cannot be understood as homogeneous. Each individual in society differs from the other. Nevertheless, the goal of hegemonic projects is to present the inside as homogeneous and current. This means both the personal identity and the collective identity of the community. This is not done by constructing a positive homogeneity within, because there is no positive inherent core, but rather by excluding antagonistically elements. Thus, if societies are heterogeneous, but they are to be constructed as homogeneous, Dislocation can be understood as a constant transformation and an ongoing decay at the structural as well as at the individual and subject level. On the subject level, these subjects can never form a closed identity. They are always split and constantly experience a lack as well as a failure as they seek to be complete but they can never achieve it. On a structural level, dislocation can be understood as a drastic change in a relatively fixed discourse. And this is accompanied by an increased occurrence of floating signifiers. 
Nevertheless, it must be assumed that dislocation is a fundamental feature of discourse and does not only refer to certain events that are located outside of the articulatory practice and destabilize the existing discourse. The understanding of dislocation as an event that cannot be explained or categorized in the existing discourse is thus correct, but nevertheless a shortened notion. On a structural level, two dimensions of dislocation can be identified. On the one hand, dislocation implies so-called translocation, and on the other hand, it indicates antagonisms. Translocation refers to a situation in which a signifier that was previously alien to the discourse enters it and thus questions and destabilizes the internal structure of the discourse. Antagonism has a destabilizing effect while at the same time also being stabilizing on the discourse. Um, since it embodies the limit of objectivity and thus the impossibility of society. It does not stand in a normal relationship of difference to the inside, but rather in an antagonistic relationship. The supposedly stable and homogeneous formation of the inside of discourse is, is thus called into question, and it is the need of a reorganization. And because dislocation is now a fundamental characteristic of discourse, also the reorganization is taking place continuously. Laclau describes dislocation as the most important condition for freedom. But this freedom, however, remains an illusion since the subject remains trapped in the failing structure and is only being constituted by it, and this dislocation is also constantly undermining this freedom. Dislocation describes the absence of foundations of social ground and exists as a persistent moment in the subjects and in the whole social order. Dislocations can be described as windows of opportunities and thus as situation of reshaping articulatory practices and the change in discourse that accompanies them. These changes in discourse can be used as platforms for hegemonic interventions. This is the moment when signifiers that were previously situated in the hegemonic discourse are uprooted and become floating signifiers. Dislocation makes the emergence of floating signifiers possible. The constantly dislocating structure thus ensures that the signifier is not definitely bound to a specific meaning. With regard to dislocation, it can be said that it is the underlying structure of the discourse. Structures and positions dislocate continuously and are constantly re-articulated and reorganized. Structures can therefore be only more or less dislocated. The presence of many floating signifiers is therefore an indication of an unstable discourse structure. Laclau and Mouffe have noted that dislocation has increased with also the increasing differentiation in industrialization and globalization. In summary then, two definitions of dislocation can be identified. One is dislocation as a continuing mode of practice. And the second one is a description of the state of lack. It is about the dislocating structure due to the absence of social foundations. Structures can be more or less dislocated. This kind of dislocation can be observed well in discourses in which there is a lot of struggle over powers of interpretation. In my opinion, one discourse would be the issue of gender, like gender identities, role models, family constellations, etc. 
Here we can see strong changes in the discourse over the last years and a lot of movement over the last decades. One could say that the structure of the discourse is particularly dislocated here and more open to re-articulations and new attributions of meaning and also the struggle to establish power over meanings and what is normal. We see in this context newer attempts to constitute meaning and break up old patterns. At the same time, we see a conservative backlash and thus the attempt to maintain hegemonic narratives. An example of dislocation in terms of the other definition as an event that is hard to explain in the discourse is for example 9-11 or other events that abruptly and intensely challenged our existing truth and normality and order. The attacks of 9-11 are often cited as an example because the event was not expected and was really drastic for the United States and actually for the entire Western identity, but also beyond. Afterwards, there were many struggles about the attribution of meaning and of course also material effects should, such as the start of the wars. All right, that's all for me now. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching it. Um, and if you enjoyed it, you can of course also subscribe to my channel and be informed about the next video. Mm -hmm.